Hi, this is Bruce Kulick, and you're listening to the awesome Z-Man on Q97. Uh, you're going to make a record as, as best as you possibly can, you know, kind of like a la revenge. Right. You know what I'm saying? Now, it's, you know, I'm not saying BK3 is revenge, because it's not like I have all the KISS members there, you know, um, and it's not 1992. Right. You know? But the point is, sonically, and it sometimes takes um, hiring a better engineer, sometimes takes doing it twice, right. three times, you know, to get it right. And then having someone really, really talented to mix it. Uh, I really, you know, didn't spare any ex expense in, in getting the best stuff possible to happen for it, you know. So, um, you know, I, I got to admit that, um, you, you know, things like this, the, the patience and, and the effort, it, it, there will be a, uh, how do I say, uh, the end result will be worth it. Right, you know, a payoff. So yeah. you really do... Need, right, the payoff is the word that I, I, I was looking for there, and and I was kicking and screaming with Jeremy at times. No, you're not. We're not going to use fake strings. There's right. real strings on it. I'm like, ah, <laughs> how, much, how much is that going to cost me? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, exactly. And, and unfortunately, even when you can get like great prices from people, mm -hmm. it's still going to cost you. you exactly. Know? I mean, you can't do it in your living room. You right. Know? So, uh, but yeah, I always felt it was worthwhile, and and you're hearing that. You see what right. I'm saying? And there are some Sonics on my record. I think. I think all of it sounds incredible, but there's a couple of tunes just the way everything came together. I'm just like, oh my God, this, this is, I'm so proud of this, you know. And that's the way I felt about Revenge, though, when that came out. Mm -hmm. I was thrilled with that record as a Kiss album, and, and I always hoped, you know, that I could do as good as that. At, it's my opinion, had Revenge been released under a different band's name, mm -hmm. I think you would have seen different results. Not that... You know, no, we still, it was still a gold record, but I know what yeah, you're saying. It yeah, could have been a, it's, a triple platinum. Yeah, the, the people that have got the, you know, the, the, the bone in the throat for Kiss, you know, dismiss without hearing. But right. had, had, the, had the album gotten into the right hands and the right mm -hmm. ears, I think it would have taken off. Right. It's an incredible album. All right, I've got a few questions to ask you that we got uh, emailed in from some of our listeners mm -hmm. today, and then we'll wrap it up. Uh, this one from Samantha says, if you could repeat any performance in your 35-year career, which would it be? Repeat. Uh -huh. Well, you know, I'm guessing what was what's what's the greatest right. memory? You know, was it that first time on tour with uh, Meatloaf in '77, or you know? I usually gravitate towards. I mean, Kiss. There were certainly highlights. Right. But I, when we played the Garden, I just thought that that was like the most amazing experience for me. Yeah. To play Madison Square Garden in New York, and I grew up in New York. Right. Um, you play there, you've made it. Yeah. Because. <laughs> You know, there weren't, back then, there weren't all these venues that changed corporate names yeah. every year. I mean, That's it's disgusting insane. what's happened with all that, you know, from the, you know, whatever, the Staples, this, right. the Verizon, that, to the to whatever bank, you know, is mm. local that has enough money to sponsor it. These were real venues that had a name. And Well, don't be surprised uh, if you don't play uh, Simmons Arena someday. <laughs> yeah, yeah oh, believe me. Uh, with, with his Donald Trump yeah. and mine and yeah. relationship, sure. You know, you know thank God not? for him. But <laughs> yeah, 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 why not? I get you. All right. I, I got to say that uh, the garden was uh, a highlight. A highlight. This one from Spencer says, uh, what was the largest crowd you ever played for? Well, again, I got to go back to Kiss, even though with Meatloaf, I did play some really big ones. But mm -hmm. we did um, that uh, Donington, which was the big British festival. Yeah. And I know we did it the year Iron Maiden was the headliner, and we were right below that on the bill. Right. And I would say there was, I was told there was like 107,000 wow. people there. Yeah. Big crowd. That was the one, the only one that someone died at, it was when Guns N' Roses played. That yeah. was like when Guns N' Roses was breaking. Wow. Because I always follow Classic Rock magazine, and yeah. I remember they were doing some facts about, mm -hmm. you know, Donington and all. So, <laughs> okay, this one from Greg says, uh, "What was the vibe for you during the unplugged performance?" I'm guessing, did you have a feeling that you know what was coming down the road was going to happen? I, uh, no, I didn't know that they were actually, in a way, is plotting the reunion. I mm -hmm. thought all the kind of strange maneuvering from Peter and Ace and the missing a rehearsal and their cautiousness around yeah. Gene and Paul had to more to do with like that they still didn't really quite mend anything yeah. you know what I mean but a lot of it was actually posturing mm -hmm. regarding the reunion tour so I'm kind of glad that I was a bit ignorant to it because yeah. it would have been harder to, to, to get to work on Carnival Souls thinking that oh I'm out of a job right. you know what I mean 